Hello friends, welcome to the Viva House of Enercom. Today we will discuss the femur bone. Now the another name of the femur bone is a thigh bone. It is the strongest and the longest bone of a body. Now it is an, an example of a typical long bone. So it is having upper end, soft and the lower end. First we will see the side determination of a femur. The first point. The upper end will contain the rounded head. The second, this head is facing medially and upwards. And the third, the sap is having the convexity facing forward. So the given bone is of a left side. Right? Now we will see the anatomical position of a femur. You should keep the femur in such a way that the head should face medially upwards and slightly forwards. Medially upwards and slightly forward. The second, the shaft lies obliquely, the shaft is lies obliquely downwards and medially so that the horizontal surface, horizontal part of a two condyles of the lower head should lies on the horizontal surface. So this is a anatomical position of a femur. Now we will discuss first the upper end of a femur. The upper end is having head, neck, greater trochanter, laser trochanter, intertrochantric line and intertrochantric crest. We see one by one. The first the head. <coughs> head is rounded and it forms the more than the uh, half of the sphere. It is articulate with the acetabulum of a hip bone to form a hip joint which is a ball and socket variety of sandwich joint. <coughs> now if you see uh, below and behind the center of this head, medially, there is a large rough pitch or a depression. This is known as a fovea. And this fovea gives attachment to the round ligament of a hip joint or a ligament of teres. The second part in the upper end is a neck. Neck lies obliquely and it connects the head with the upper end of the shaft. The average length of the neck is 3.7 cm. Now the neck is having two surfaces and two border. Two surfaces are anterior surface, posterior surface. Two border are upper surface, or upper border and lower border. First we will see the borders. The upper border is horizontal and concave. It connects the head with greater trochanter, upper border. Whereas the lower border is straight and oblique, it connects the head with the laser trochanter. This is lower border. Now the surface, first the anterior surface. The anterior surface is flat and it connects the head with intertrochanteric line anterior surface and last the posterior surface. The posterior surface is convex from above downwards and concave from side to side. It connects the head with intertrochanteric crest. Intertrochanteric crest. So these are the part of the neck and the neck is intracapsular. <laughs> now the another uh, feature in the neck. Now this lower edge of a neck will make an angle with the shaft which is known as a neck shaft angle and the average measurement of this neck shaft angle is 125 degree in adults. Now this neck shaft angle is strengthened by additional thickening or additional buttress of the compact bond and this part this additional buttress is known as a calcar femoral. Calcar femoral. Now the second thing, 
वॉट इज एंगल ऑफ टॉर्जन और एंगल ऑफ एंटीवर्जन The transverse axis of the upper uh, upper end and that of a lower end is not in the line, but it will make an angle of a 15 degree, which is known as an angle of the torsion. So you can say the upper end is slightly facing anteriorly than the lower end, and the femur bone is slightly twisted. So it will make an angle which is known as an angle of a torsion or angle of antiversion. Now the third part in the upper end is a greater trochanter. The greater trochanter is a quadrilateral prominence located at the junction of the upper end of a shaft with the hip. Now the parts of the greater trochanter it is having the upper border. At the end of the upper border there is an apex, then three surfaces: anterior surface, lateral surface. and in the medial surface now the anterior surface is having rough area laterally the lateral surface is having the oblique ridge which is facing downward and forward and the third medial surface is having rough upper part and the deep fossa which is known as a trochanteric fossa in the lower part now we see the attachment of a greater trochanter The apex of the greater trochanter will provide the insertion of piriformis muscle. The second, the rough area on the anterior surface provides insertion of a gluteus minimus muscle, and the oblique ridge on the lateral surface receives the insertion of gluteus medius muscle. Now on the medial surface, the rough upper part receives the insertion of obturator internus and superior and inferior gemmula, whereas the deep trochanteric fossa receives the insertion of obturator externus. Now the fourth part of upper end, that that is lesser trochanter. Lesser trochanter is a conical projection which lies posterior inferior part of the neck with the junction of the sac. Now the attachment of the lesser trochanter, its uh, apex and the anterior surface laterally receives insertion of psoas major, whereas its base and the, some area below it will receives the insertion of a iliacus muscle. Now the fifth part in the upper end, intertrochanteric line. Intertrochanteric line is a rough ridge which is extending from. Anterior superior angle of a greater trochanter as a tubercle up to the lower part or in front of a lesser trochanter at a spiral line. Now the attachment of the greater trochanter, its upper part provides attachment of upper band of iliofemoral ligament, and the lower part provides attachment of lower band of a iliofemoral ligament. now the muscle the upper part of the greater trochanter gives origin to the highest fiber of vastus lateralis muscle whereas the lower part gives origin to the highest fiber of a vastus medialis muscle now this is all about the intertrochanteric line now the last part of the upper end that is intertrochanteric crest the intertrochanteric crest extend from the apex of a greater trochanter above to the lesser trochanter below now just above the middle of this intertrochanteric crest there is a small elevation which is known as a quadrate tubercle this quadrate tubercle receives the insertion of quadratus femoris muscle so this is all about the upper end now we will see the shaft If you like this video like it and share with your friends and to get the regular update on the anatomy videos please subscribe to the our channel and click on the bell icon